Dear students, a very good afternoon. So last time we were reading the fourth chapter from your rapid, that is the Moji and the Marquis. There are two persons about whom this chapter uh, tells so many things. And remember that these are the things you are learning and you are coming across. What about the incidents you are coming across in this chapter? This will mold, shape the rest of the story. The story chronicles the French Revolution. This whole novel, the A Tale of Two Cities, chronicles the uh, French Revolution. And uh, here, in this chapter, we will come across the incidents and those things that led to a bloody revolt. What was happening there that the people at large, they became so hostile to the uh, aristocratic society and, the, and the, those people. What did they do that uh, people felt that uh, this is inevitable that we need to uh, either we need to uh, rout them out or get perished by them. So they were forced uh, and, uh, to uh, choose in between these binary choices either to get killed by the aristocratic people because of their unending exploitation or let us reunite and rout them out. So that was the binary choice before the people at large in at France. Uh, and especially here, you will come across all those uh, little incidents that uh, triggered and that actually sowed the seed of French Revolution here uh, in this chapter. So we read up to the unfortunate accident that took place uh, when people were <coughs> moving along the streets and the streets were crowded by the homeless people, jobless people, unfed people, the people who did not have access to uh, the basic amenities like uh, at least some governments to uh, deter the winter's cold and summer's heat. Those people who were wearing only rags looking like uh, scarecrows these people were there, crowding the streets, roaming here and there in search of food, in search of job, in search of a shelter. And Marquis was running his carriage through the, the crowd of the people as if a tornado is ripping through a village. And yes, the life of a little boy was the collateral of it. The carriage ran over the little boy and that uh, unfortunate boy, little boy, died on the spot. And uh, his father, who witnessed the brutal death of his little child, rushed to the spot. He was overwhelmed with uh, sorrow, with grief, and he was howling like an animal. Now we will see how Marcus, who ran over his carriage, uh, uh, who, who was driving the carriage that ran over the boy, causing his death, how he reacts. Now we will come to know. So here it is written that the watchful and eager people closed around. Yes, that will happen if there is an accident in the street. And looked at the Marcus. The Marquis looked at them as if they were mere rats. Rats means what? What are the things that you compare uh, to rats? What is the particular characteristics of rats? They waste things that they cannot enjoy. Means according to a Marquis, the money which government was spending for all these poor people, this was wastage. And they were rats, they were wasting the money. They were wasting the economy. They were eating out the economy. And one more implication is that these rats mean something that is indifferent, that is, uh, that you are indifferent to. You don't feel about their lives, whether they live or die, that doesn't matter. You don't count them in your life. That's the attitude of Marcus was there for those people, those poor people who were uh, struggling to keep it to, to, to stay alive. They were like rats to Marcus. 
Mark is thought that these people don't deserve to uh, live, to stay alive. So that was his mental uh, setup and uh, uh, with a view of uh, utter dejection and uh, annoyance and uh, disgust, he was looking at the mob who were gathering around that dead body of the child and the howling bereaved father. He took out his purse and threw a coin, commanding that they should take better care of themselves and their children. See his audacity. He is throwing a coin, just a single coin, to compensate the life of that little child. And he threw it to the father, the bereaved father of that little child that had to uh, meet uh, such a brutal death. He was throwing a coin as if he is compensating. Now something has done, I have done something wrong and uh, this is the compensation for the life of, that, of your child. For a father, can you imagine how profound the value of the life of his son that cannot be measured by a man like Marcus. But he did it. He threw a coin as if he was throwing it, it for a beggar or for some commodity he was buying from the market. These lives did not matter to him. That's why it was told that he, that those people were, were like rats to the Marcus. Just then deferred. Deferred, you remember? The, the owner of that wine shop and uh, that shop and at the upstairs of that shop it was Mr. Manithi, Dr. Manithi who had been living since he came out of his came out of the jail and this was the same place where Miss Lucy she found her father, her long lost father and met him for the first time in his life and rescued him from there and they are now settling it in, in England that Mr. Deferge reached there to console the bereaved father, the grieving father, and console the howling man. What was his name? Gaspard. Remember that name, Gaspard. The Marquis threw a coin at them and was soon driving through the country landscape. Yes, he left the spot, left them to their fate, as if I have compensated the loss I incurred upon that man with only single pese. That was his attitude to these poor people. So the village of Bivis was narrow and it contained poor houses, poor public conveniences, poor people. The taxes had taken away everything they possessed. So they were not poor by birth. It was the system of the government, incumbent government, that was sucking, that was exploiting the people, that was depriving the people of their basic amenities, that was exacting uh, too much taxes from the people. Because of these rules, these setup, this kind of system, these people are poor, villages are poor, while in, in, in the city the grand hotel owned by an aristocrat named uh, uh, Mr. Mosier. They were becoming richer and richer. But in the village, poor people were becoming poor and poor. Their condition was worsening day by day. Remember one thing here in this chapter, the thing the writer wants to show us. It is the juxtaposition of opulence and abject poverty. Remember this thing. One side there is opulence and on the other side there is abject poverty. The Marquis stopped the carriage and at the village fountain to speak to the road mender who had stared hard at the carriage when it passed by earlier. So, while Marquis was coming to a stop and to have a talk with the road mender, the road mender saw something there unusual in the carriage and he was staring at it. What is it? Let's read. The roadmender said that he had seen someone wearing a blue cap, same blue cap owned by the father of the dead boy, hiding under the carriage. So we come to know that the father secretly hid himself inside the carriage and followed Marcus to his place. Yes, of course, the man who has lost the 
life of his dear child and the man who was behind it showed such a nonchalant attitude towards his child he will become vengeful and by any means he he, he would like to take avenge he would like to avenge the loss of his dead child so now this blue capped man was nowhere to be found he disappeared into the mob into the crowd and uh, roadmender said this fellow had been tall and had a white face like a specter like a skeleton yes it was the shock of his of the death of his child that made him specter pale that made him too much uh, disappointed with the society with the system he was numb with shock the only thing that was there at the surface of his mind uh, at the top of his mind that was revenge he cannot satisfy his uh, loss unless he takes revenge that was there in the uppermost of his mind that's why he was looking like specter he has lost all the color of his face he became a specter uh, a walking dead and because because he saw his own child meeting a brutal death and the absolute nonchalance from the person who caused it this created a sensation in the crowd but the mock is ignored it yes of course he was a proud man he uh, would uh, Uh, surely ignore all these things because he thinks that i am marquis and who are these uh, wretched people and what are they going to do to me they cannot even pluck a hair from my body i am marquis that kind of proud man he was cautioning the postmaster gabelli another person we are meeting here gabelli who is the postmaster i told you that all charles dickens's writings are full of uh, characters another character's gabel is the postmaster to keep a sharp watch for this tall white man the marquis drove on to his chateau remember c h a t a u that pronounced uh, chateau this is the big an extra big i i should say large villa in france they are called chateau the marquis chateau was a heavy mass of building with a heavy stone balustrades is a particular form of uh, construction having pillars side by side and having a kind of uh, uh, what should i say a kind of uh, jutted out roof from the veranda that kind of construction is called uh, balustrade so that was the particular uh, construction style of the chateau stone urns urns are the places where the ashes of the dead bodies are kept stone floors stone faces of men stone heads of lions all directions so the thing the author wants to say us that the whole chateau was stony and not only the chateau not only the figurines which decked the chateau not only all the pillars and all the uh, verandas of the chateaus were made of stone but also the people who were dwelling in the chateau their heart also turned into stone they were stony hearted people devoid of a single a dram of mercy a, a single iota of mercy inside their heart that is the thing the author wants to convey to the readers by uh, b- uh, focusing on the stony build of the chateau by focusing on uh, how uh, how how much stone was uh, uh, replete in that uh, uh, chateau all the figurines all the all, all those things that decked the chateau was also made of stone which means everything has become stony if in the heart of the people who are living there it also turned into stone there is not a scintilla of compassion inside their heart they are out and out revengeful person and of course uh, a, a person who are formidable you need to keep away from those those persons because they are the absolute exploiter and tyrant the marquis asked whether his nephew mosie charles charles is the name that we heard in the last chapter charles darnay had arrived from england yes so now we come to know that this charles 
His surname Dane is not the real one. Actually, his surname is Evermonde, but he doesn't use it because he had his title. And with the title, all the inheritance of uh, sin, exploitation, and all those things he had. That's why he doesn't use the title. That uh, surname, I should not say title, I should say surname. So he had not, so the Marquis went uh, up to the bedchamber. A supper table was laid for two for Marquis and his nephew and the Marquis sat down uh, to sup quarter of an hour later means 15 minutes later he was there prepared to have his supper half an hour later carriage wheel sounded means someone has reached there and it was his nephew known in England as Charles Darnay I told you beforehand the Marquis received him formally but they did not shake hands means there was no such deep cord of communication in between this uh, nephew and his uh, uncle Donna told him what had happened in England and how he had almost lost his life. He accused the Marquis of possibly endangering his life, whereupon the Marquis said that he would do whatever was necessary to preserve the family's honour. So Marquis is a determined person for whom it is the honour of his family that comes first, even at the expense of the lives of the common people. That's how he, uh, that kind of desperate man he is. And he expressed it very frankly that, see, Marquis, that she, Darnay, you are my uh, um, nephew, but remember one thing that I will do, and I can go as long, as far as uh, I should go, in order to keep the honor of my family intact. I can do whatever things, whatever the things I need to do, in order to keep my family's honor intact. Donna said that the family was reaping the ill-gotten fruits of repression and slavery. Yes, his uh, previous generations were also indulged uh, in uh, uh, exploiting the people, exacting taxes from them unnecessarily, unlawfully, illegally. And these are the things that uh, Mr. Donna doesn't support. He said that I cannot bear all these uh, 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 bear the outcome of all these wrongs which have been performing uh, by uh, the predecessors of my, of my family like you and your predecessor also and it was wrong the marquis nonchalantly uh, responded means indifferently means that doesn't matter to him whatever charles darnley was telling his uncle he said see child whatever you are telling doesn't matter to me and remember one thing the i I will, I will stay exactly the way I had been doing. Means whatever I had been doing till now, I will continue to do the same. Means I had been exploiting the people, I had been taking, exacting taxes from the poor, uh, poor people, I had been uh, torturing the poor people, and I had been a, a tyrant. And this is what I am. And that is what something that I am going to be. I am going to. I'm, I'm, I will continue to be. That is what Marcus is telling. That I will stay exactly like the way you are finding me right now. Now the change. Okay. Finally, Darnie renounced his property and France. Yes, Darnie thought that I cannot bear the consequence of, of all these wrongs and I cannot enjoy the property amassed by my predecessors by exploiting the people. I won't accept all these things. I am renouncing my uh, surname, I am renouncing my uh, claim over this property and not only the property because this is the particular system that is being that is in vogue in France, that is, uh, is being practiced in France. I will leave the France. I will leave my own motherland for good. I want to return here because whatever is going on here, I can't bear. I can't tolerate all this tyranny being practiced in France by the aristocratic people. So the Marquis asked him if he intended to settle in England where another compatriot means another uh, countryman, a doctor and his daughter means Mr. Manethi, means Dr. Manethi and Miss Manethi, his Lucy Manethi, uh, his, his daughter, they were also settled. Do you know that? Donner replied in the affirmative, means he said, yes, affirmative, yes, I am going to settle with them. Whereupon Marcus smiled mysteriously. Why? He wanted to tell in a roundabout way to his nephew that, see, you are telling that you can't bear whatever is happening in France and that is why you are leaving France. But I don't think this is the only cause you are leaving France. You are leaving France because you want to settle with those people, those French people who are settling in England. 
and uh, of course Adarni said that yes I want to settle with them uh, the next morning the Marquis lay dead in his bed now something happened there next morning Marquis lay dead in his bed someone had killed him so there are two options and two pre uh, presumptions we know that the father of the dead child reached there in order to take revenge he might have killed him which is very much uh, obvious and people also think that because the nephew is uh, leaving France for good on the same night before dawn when his uncle was killed so people were also suspecting Darni that he might have killed his uncle so there are two options are there let's see which option uh, becomes true around its hilt means handle was a frill of paper a paper was rolled down there and on which it was scrawled something uh, someone had written there drive him fast to his tomb means the moment you find the person dead here you take him to his grave as soon as possible this from Jax and the man who did it I am Jax so we were expecting the name of Gaspard but now here it is written Jax this Jax that name is a very significant name in this story later you will come to know how there was a mysterious society <laughs> clandestine society was there who were executing one by one who were executing the uh, aristocrats uh, secretly one by one and then later in the next chapter you will come across all these things about the jacks so till then you read the whole chapter revise it and please let me know if you are facing any kind of trouble so that's all for today students Ta -ta.